introduction. He is Reverend John Scott, our leader here at the temple, our spiritual friend, our spiritual, well, I don't want to call him daddy. <laughs> He's our spiritual connection here. He is an inspirational speaker, a teacher par excellence, and just a all-around lovable person. That's why we call him John the Beloved. Please help me welcome Reverend John. Good morning, spiritual family. You know, years ago I was in London on a, a, a very wintry uh, January evening and I, I, there was a, a thick fog, you know, one of those pea supers, and I was feeling quite lonely and bereft. And out of the fog, I heard a voice saying, Lad, it faggy, I can hardly breathe. I said, I'm home. <laughs> Wherever you are, Jamaican, thank you for being here. She said, yes, man, you're everything. So, when I take my mask off and I'm not fogging up my glasses, I feel like I am at last free to breathe, and I ask you to breathe with me. And so welcome. It's a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to all of you in the sanctuary and those joining us on the World Wide Web on Facebook Live. It's a wonderful morning, as Carol said uh, in her opening remarks, and it's just wonderful to be alive and breathing. So to help us connect with each other, please take a deep breath with me right now. As you breathe in, just say right where I am, and as you exhale, audibly say, infinite presence is. Right where I am, infinite presence is. Breathe in. Right where I am. Breathe out. <sighs> infinite presence is. Again, breathe in. Right where I am, breathe out, <sighs> infinite presence is. Give it to me one more time, breathe in. Right where I am, breathe out, <sighs> infinite presence is. Laurie Deschen, author of a book called Tiny Buddha's Gratitude Journal, writes, and I quote, when we're feeling frustrated or panicked or stressed or scared, we tend to breathe rapid, shallow breaths, allowing minimal air to our lungs. You ever find that in Jamaica, say, we breathe short. This can actually lead to a number of physical problems, including dizziness, headaches, chronic fatigue, heart palpitations, headaches, high blood pressure, and even numbness. So on top of the difficult emotions we may experience, we then create short-term and long-term physical problems by reducing the amount of oxygen that gets to our lungs and to our brains. Not only does this help us release tension and reduce anxiety, when we use the alternative of breathing deep, mindful, slow breaths. Just breathe in. You know, in my classes at the General Penitentiary here in Kingston, it's called the Thomas Street Adult Correctional Center. Um, um, either earlier this year or later last year, I can't remember, I can't remember, remember the, the authorities, authorities discovered, discovered that a person, a person or person who were trying to tunnel and escape out, out, out of the prison. And, and as, as usually, usually happens when things of that nature occur, the whole prison was on lockdown. You know, those who might be guilty, those who weren't involved, everybody gets locked down. And so classes were suspended. And after about three weeks, I phoned and said, you're going to lockdown forever? And they said, no, okay, you can come. So I arrived. And when I got there, the participants in, this pro in, the, in the program, which we call Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, were just so uptight. They were, as we say in Jamaica, breathing short. And I said to them, before we say a word, let's just breathe. Hear one of them, how you do that? <laughs> I, I don't blame them, it's hard to breathe in, that kind, in those kind of environments. I said, just shut your, close your eyes gently if that's comfortable for you and take a deep breath as you say with me, right where I am, right here, infinite presence is. 
and we did it five times together. And I can tell you the atmosphere. We, we meet in the chapel, and the atmosphere in that chapel palpably changed. You could feel the change in emotions and in the, in the, in the energy that people were exuding. And this, one of them said, Rated. Uh, in, if you don't speak Jamaican, that means, wow, <laughs> what a difference. I never know just breathing could make a difference. And I said to them, breathing is evidence, not only that you are alive, but that God is alive in you. God actually breathes you. So every time you breathe, just remember that God is breathing you. And that became a thing for that whole class. Every class when we started, they said, let us take five deep breaths with reverent and say, God is breathing us. Breathing together really is an amazing gift that we can share. And you know, the word to conspire, from which we get conspiracy, actually means to breathe together. So that's what it means to just breathe, to take a breath and know that as you inhale, right where you are, the infinite presence of God is. The average person, I'm told, takes between 17,000 and 23,000 breaths a day. Breathing is such a natural process that most of us, most of the time, don't even think about it and we take it for granted, don't we? And then along comes COVID-19, and we are obliged to wear a mask, which perhaps gives us a new appreciation of breathing freely. I pointed out to a lady who was wearing her mask below her nose in the supermarket a few days ago that it was possibly the worst place to be doing so. And she said, I quote, I know, but I can't breathe. Besides, you don't see everybody wearing their mask under their nose. Unquote. Uh, for those who don't speak Jamaican, you are saying, don't you see that everybody is, is doing it this way? Well, the first part of her statement, my friends, I can't breathe, reminded me of the thousands of protesters all over the world chanting those words, I can't breathe. The last words of a black man being asphyxiated by a white police officer kneeling on his neck. And I remember thinking at the time, that's not a very good affirmation to be saying over and over. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And, you know, right there in the supermarket, the idea of having a mask for the Temple of Light that said, instead of I can't breathe, breathe with me. Let us conspire together in love, in compassion, in tenderness, in understanding for each other's humanity and celebration of each other's divinity. Let us breathe together the greatness of our nation, the goodness of humankind, and the fact that the world is not only changing, it is, as Carol said in her poem this morning, becoming. Becoming what God intended us all to be, the radiant expressions of something so wonderful, so beautiful, so awesome in its presence and its power that we can only gasp our appreciation. We can only say deep from within us, thank you, God, that right where I am, what infinite presence is. The second part of my fellow shopper's statement, you know, sister, nobody now wear, wear them mask on them nose. Uh, can't you see that everybody is doing it this way? Brought to mind St. Paul's advice in Romans 12, verse 2, something that is familiar to all of you, I'm sure. St. Paul wrote, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By what? The renewing of your mind. And that's why we know that we can say, when you change your thinking, when you renew your mind, when you change how you react to the circumstances that you are faced with this morning, you change your life. You change it in amazing, 
almost miraculous ways. I say almost because there are no miracles. There is only God's certain evolution and unfoldment and change from good to greater good and from glory to greater glory in our lives and in our affairs. You know, I knew a very talented artist who had obviously opted to do the kind of decorative work that sold easily. You know that kind of stuff that decorators bought by the hundreds to hang in hotel rooms? He was an excellent artist, but he was rather like a French painter of yesteryear known as Daumier, who similarly trivialized his work in order to keep the pot boiling. And I can understand that for artists and craftspeople all over the world and right here in Jamaica. We do what we think will sell, you know, easy. And so you drive through Ferngully and see some absolute aberrations of giraffes and other, other things, knowing that they've never even seen one, you know, except maybe in the movies. But it keeps the pot boiling. And so they are conformed to the world. And this artist was known to say, well, when in Rome, you do as the Romans do. You know, I have to earn a living. Have you come across this type of apology from people who today behave in a manner that is not in keeping with the highest standards of excellence and propriety? A businessman recently told me that there are aspects of his business practice that he really dislikes. And he confided that having come to, to the Temple of Light, some of these practices are incongruent with what he is learning here in terms of authenticity and honesty and good business practice. But he said, <laughs> the times dictate my behavior, John, and this is a dog nyam dog economy. For those of you who don't speak Jamaican, that is a dog eat dog economy. Now there is somebody, my friends, undoubtedly conformed to this world. And God bless those people who take a stand and say, I will not conform to what is being done. I will do the correct thing. People get into unhealthy habits, you know, of drinking and, and drugs and what have you. And our, our, our teenagers, we have seen it happen, and young people, people of all ages, really. Keeping up with the Joneses, because the world says you have to live in a bigger house and drive a better car and drink this alcohol or do this in order to belong and to be one of the in crowd. And so we say, well, everybody is doing it. And a lot of parents stand by and say, what am I to do? That's how things are today. I give up. I, what's the point of correcting them? All their friends are doing it. So let us just go along with it. Right? No. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You can begin to breathe a new consciousness of integrity and authenticity and propriety into your business and into your relationships and into how you express the highest and the best of whom you are. Few of us get, can escape getting caught up in one way or another in conformity, but we can all make a stand right where we are and as a community, both here in Jamaica and on the World Wide Web, we can breathe together in a conspiracy that says we will change the world by being the highest and best. We don't conform. We are renewing the world and our lives and our environment and our nations and our friendships and our associations by renewing our minds and renewing how we relate to each other. And so this morning I come to you to say, let us breathe together in this conspiracy of love known as the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Note it's a center, and from that center radiates all the love, the peace, the compassion, the goodness, the honesty, the integrity, the authenticity that all of us would see and would know and experience in our country and in the world at large. So we give in from time to time to the temptation to justify our mistakes and to say our, our foibles and our weaknesses and to say I'm only human. 
wrong again. Eric Butterworth, one of the great New Thought authors, writes, and I quote, the greatest mistake is in believing that you are only human. Our humanity is but the degree to which we have given expression to our divinity. We are human in expression, but we are divine in creation and limitless in possibility, unquote. The good news is we need not be conformed to this world. We can, we can call forth the God potential from within us by affirming our unity with the infinite. Jesus assured us that when we do this and act as though we really believe it, we will be able to do all things, all the things he did, and even greater things will we do. As Butterworth puts it, and I quote, when we know the truth of this great potential within us, which Jesus called the kingdom of God within, we are free to become our unlimited self, free to do unlimited things. We are seeing in a different light. We react to a different set of principles. We draw upon a higher potential that has always been within us and which has always really been who we are, it has always been us, unquote. You know, friends, when you look in the mirror, you see the physical three-dimensional person, the human of form and shape, and you might be too happy with that, what you are saying, neither. But you probably say, as I do, wafido, a somiste, what to do, that's how I am. But when you take a deep breath and affirm that right where you are, infinite presence is, you begin to see through the mirror instead of in it. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12, Paul writes, we see in a mirror darkly. And then he advises that we will come to see how? Face to face. We will come to see the truth of who we are and of who all people are. In other words, beyond the appearances revealed in the mirror is the total person, the person that you are, the person that God created you to be. And when you feel like you are breaking up and pieces are falling off, which they will, do what God told Carol this morning. Let them go. You are in the process of becoming the spiritually magnificent being that you were created to be. The world would not be the same if you did not walk the earth at this time. It's, it's such an amazing time to be alive. I was saying to some uh, friends a few days ago, people like me born in 1943, I remember, just barely, but I remember tram cars coming up King Street in King, downtown Kingston. And then we have seen everything from man walking on the moon to the fall of the Berlin Wall to the, the, the dismantling of apartheid. We have seen such amazing changes. We have been part of a world history that is just phenomenal. And what a privilege it has been to be part of that experience, to breathe through all of those experiences of being human. And so this brings me to your assignment. Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know that when I give an encouragement, I always give an assignment. And so your mission, should you decide to undertake it, my friends, is to do some mirror work this week. Every time you look in a mirror, take a deep breath in and affirm, right here, right where I am. Say it with me. Right here, right where I am. And as you exhale, exhale audibly. Ah, all of all of infinite presence. All of God, all of all of all of all of joy, all of whatever you're working on in your life. Decree it to be there. Be there. And do this, and do this five, five times. times. And then maybe like my participant at the general penitentiary here in Kingston, you will say, boy, it's easy, you know. All you really have to do is just breathe. But in Jamaica, we don't, we don't aspirate the TH, so we, we, he said, you just breathe. I said, no, that's not what I said. <laughs> We're trying to put a stop to that. What I am saying is you must breathe. 
My friends, let every breath you take remind you that beyond the physical appearance, beyond the challenges, there is that of you, there is that of you that is divine, that is precious, that is holy, that's wholesome, and that cannot be touched by the vagaries of change and societal norms and COVIDs and other, whatever it is we are facing. There is that of you that is divine. It is unassailable. It's untouched. It has never been hurt. It can never die. It was never born. It is eternal. It is the infinite presence expressing in, through, for, and as every breath you take. Practice your mindful breathing this week. And as you look in the mirror, in addition, as you go about your daily activities, notice whether you sometimes hold your breath when anxious or, as we sometimes do, begin to breathe shallowly to blow short. When you are vexed or, argue, or arguing or stressed, you will find that your breath starts to come in short spurts. If this happens, stop. Just stop immediately and take those five deep, mindful breaths as you affirm, what? Right where I am. What? Infinite presence is. Say it with me now. Come so. Right where I am. Infinite presence is. Laurie Deschen, who I mentioned earlier, advises, and I quote, if you are feeling overwhelmed, then breathe. Just breathe. Forget for a minute about everything that needs to be done and take it all one slow step and a deep breath at a time. If you are feeling worried, just breathe. Forget for a minute about everything that might go wrong and create what can go right in your mind. One slow step and a deep breath at a time. If you are feeling scared, just breathe. Forget for a moment about everything that might hurt you and take care of yourself one slow step and a deep breath at a time. Oftentimes the world inside our heads is far more chaotic than the world outside it. We have immense power, my friends, to calm it by remembering to just breathe. So let us conclude as we began by breathing in and affirming together. Breathe in, right where I am, breathe out. Ah, infinite presence is. My friends, right where you are, infinite presence is. As the voice of God assured Carol this morning in the John Riddle poem that we shared at the beginning of the service, you are not broken, but you are breaking, like the dawn. It's a new day. Let's breathe together and become. Namaste.